Hello, this is Mr. Sutton, and today we're going to be talking about Skill 5.2, Pythagorean Theorem Word Problems. I'm just going to go through some examples here from Delta Math. There's no really new concepts introduced in this lesson, but I'm going to show you some tips on how to interpret the word problems and you know draw the picture from the word problem to set up your Pythagorean Theorem problem. So let's look at this first one here. You start driving east for 14 miles, turn left, then uh, drive north for another 10 miles. At the end of driving, what is your straight line distance from your starting point? So if we think about our cardinal directions, we have north, east, south, west. So if we're driving east, 14 miles would look something like this and then turn left I didn't give myself enough room to turn left did I let's pull this down here all right and then we turn left we drive that direction for 10 miles so now we're going north uh, what is the straight line distance from your starting point so we're starting here ending here so the straight line be like this so this is our right triangle here um, so we are finding the hypotenuse we have our two legs forming the right angle 14 and 10 and we're finding the hypotenuse so we have 14 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared and we want to solve for x so main idea for these word problems is just to draw a picture and make sure it accurately represents what you have uh, given in the word problem here. So 14 squared is 196, 10 squared is 100. Add those together, you get 296. And then we're trying to find x, not x squared, so we still have the square root to both sides. And it wants it to the nearest tenth of a mile. So my calculator is saying 17.20465. So the nearest tenth is the first place after the decimal. So that is just 17.2 and then miles. So there's one example. I'm going to go through a couple different ones here. If you place a 39 foot ladder against the top of a building and the bottom of the ladder is 31 feet from the bottom of the building, how tall is the building? So we have our building is going to be vertical. And then here's the ground. And then the ladder go like this. The ladder we know is 39 feet. So that is the hypotenuse in this case, because the ladder is at an angle. Here's our right angle down here. And then we know the length from the bottom of the ladder to the bottom of the building. So that would be this length here is 31 feet. What we don't know is how tall the building is. So we're going to call that X. So remember, I have our hypotenuse has to go on one side of the equal sign by itself. So our two legs are x and 31. So I'll have x squared plus 31 squared equals 39 squared. That's the hypotenuse. So it has to go over here. 31 squared is 961. 39 squared is 1,521. So subtract 961 on both sides. And you get x squared equals 560. And then square root both sides. And again, it says round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So I have 23.6643 so we're going to round that to 23.7. And since we're rounding, we should use the approximately symbol rather than the equal to symbol. 
Uh, that's something I did not do on the last slide, so we fixed that. Should be approximately 23.7 feet. Next one here, an altitude is drawn from the vertex of an isosceles triangle forming a right angle and two congruent triangles. As a result, the altitude cuts the base uh, into two equal segments. The length of the altitude is 30 inches and the length of the base is 10 inches. Find the triangle's perimeter round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So let's take this one sentence at a time. A lot to draw here. So uh, we have an isosceles triangle, first off. So these two sides are congruent. And then we have an altitude drawn uh, which would look like this, forming a right angle and two congruent triangles. So we have now these two smaller congruent triangles. As a result, the altitude cuts the base into two equal segments. So the base is down here. So this is being bisected, the two equal segments. The length of the altitude is 30. So this right here is 30. And the length of the base, the whole thing, is 10 inches. So we want to find the triangle's perimeter. So we know one side of this larger triangle. We don't know these other sides. Um, but we do have that we have uh, right triangles here. And since this base is being cut in half, this half would have to be 5 inches. So if I were to just separate this right triangle here, We have a leg of five and a leg of 30, and we just need to find the hypotenuse. So we're gonna do that using Pythagorean theorem, like so. Five squared is 25, 30 squared is 900. Add those together. Square root both sides. Uh, and so it says round to the nearest tenth of an inch, but that is for the final answer of the perimeter. So I'm going to leave this for now in simplest radical form, which is five root 37 because we still have some more steps to do before we round. So that is the length of x, which is one of these sides. So this side over here is also going to be 5 root 37. These are congruent triangles, so they have the same uh, length here. We already said that these two sides are congruent. So now we want to find the perimeter so we want to add up all of these lengths. So what we're going to do is type this whole thing into our calculator and then round that answer. Rather than rounding each of these individually, then when you add them up, um, you're rounding multiple times. So you are potentially getting too far away from what the answer is delta math wants. So try to be as exact as possible uh, leading up to the last step and then you can round. And when you do that, you might get this answer first, um, which is okay. That's just not what they want in delta math. So the next thing you would do is you should see a button that kind of looks like this. It has two triangles pointing in different directions. That is how you convert to decimals. So then you would get 70.8276253. Since we're rounding to the nearest tenth, that's just going to be 70.8 inches. All right. 
Here we have the area of a rectangle is 44 square units. Its length measures four units. Find the length of its diagonal round to the nearest tenth of a unit. So we have a rectangle. Uh, we know the area is 44 units. We know one of the lengths is four units. We don't know the width of this time, uh, but we know area is, well, let's call this W for width. So we know area is length times width. We know the area is 44, and we know the length is 4. So we can plug those things in. So we have 44 equals 4 W. Divide 4 on both sides. W equals 11. And then now we want to find the diagonal. So if I draw in diagonal like so. We know that the rectangle has right angles, so we can see we have a right triangle here, and the diagonal would be the hypotenuse. So we have 11 squared plus 4 squared equals, we'll call this x. 11 squared is 121, Oops. 4 squared is 16. Uh, 121 plus 16 is 137. Square root both sides. And again, we want to round to the nearest tenth of a unit. So that is approximately 11.7 units. All right, and then I think this is the last one here. Yes. All right. So last one, a 45 foot ladder set against the side of a house. So that reaches up 25 or 27 feet. If Cooper grabs the ladder at its base and pulls it four feet further from the house, how far up the side of the house will the ladder reach now? The answer is not. 23 feet round to the nearest tenth of a foot. So we have our original set up here. Where we have our 45 foot ladder. Uh, and it reaches up 27 feet. And we don't know what this is yet. And then Cooper changes that. So then, so he pulls it four feet farther. Uh, so it's whatever the original length is plus four. And then we're trying to figure out what this is, the how far up reaches the side of the house. So what I think we want to do here is first we want to complete this triangle, figure out what X is. And then once we figure out what X is, we can plug it in here to figure out what Y is, which is the uh, how far up it reaches the side of the house. So let's do that. So X is one of our legs. 45 is the hypotenuse. So there's your setup. 27 squared is 729. 45 squared is 2,025. Subtract 729 on both sides. Square root. And you get x equals 36. That comes out nicely. So that means this is going to be 36 plus 4, 
which is 40. So now we have two out of three of the sides of this right triangle over here, so we can find this length. So we have y is a leg again, 40 is a leg, and 45 is a hypotenuse. So our setup to find y would look like this. 40 squared is 1600. 45 squared, we already did that, is 2,025. Subtract 1,600 on both sides. Get 425. Square root both sides. And rounding to the nearest tenth of a foot you get 20.6 oops feet okay so that was the last example i have for this one um you might be wondering why we're doing a lot of rounding for these word problems that's kind of standard for word problems are the ones where usually you will have your answer rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot versus the more um, kind of abstract math problems you have your answers left in um, simplest radical form and that's just because a problem like this if i tell you it's 20.6 feet up the side of a building you can have an idea of what that would look like in simplest radical form this was five root 17 feet which is harder to like understand what the distance of 5 root 17 would look like up the side of a building so it's less practical for these like real world type problems so there you go uh, if you have any questions make sure you are asking your teacher for help and have a good day